Hello. I'm not going to be as funny as the last talker. He was amazing, wasn't he? Um, right. So, I'm a musician. I play the cello and the piano. I love African drumming, and I compose. But at the center of all my work is music in the community and creating multi-art projects with, within communities, often with children. The vision that music can play in addressing social and educational needs has always been central to this work that I do. But music is not only about community. It also helps embody and define the relationship between the individual and the community. The ongoing challenge has been to find a unity within structure where elements of diverse traditions can coexist. I've been working for a long time in the UK, but after several years I was invited to go and be part of a project in War Child in the Caucasus, working in the Republic of Georgia with displaced communities. I'd like to speak a little bit about the transformative time I had there, where I visited Georgia over a five-year period to train psychologists to use the creative arts, working with children suffering from severe trauma. I'd like to stress that the work was not of a psychosocial nature, nor was it music therapy, but in recognizing the therapeutic powers of music, we hope to bring some relief to the refugee children. My personal belief is that the creative experience is absolutely paramount, and that within the very nature of creative arts, there exists a potential for change. I'd like to describe to you the conditions in the camp in Giri in 2000. The most outlying center near the border with Abkhazia is situated in a former industrial complex. At first glance, it seems almost civilized as one enters a wide tree-lined avenue with a certain faded elegance. But refugees are crowded into decaying devastation beside an abandoned industrial plant which fills the air with toxic dust. Sanitation is very poor, and there is an atmosphere of complete hopelessness, stagnation, and depression. A former te teacher assesses that there are over 50 deeply traumatized children in this center alone. As in all our visits, crowds of adults gathered round in curiosity. In one week, we made a project, a boat sailed on seven seas. Georgian mothers helped us. Sometimes we rehearsed in two adjoining bedrooms. An elderly lady lay in one of the beds. We made a boat from Willow and old newspapers, and we worked outside with the children. The children were little clowns wearing red noses and white vests from the market. And our boat sailed across these seven seas, finally coming to rest in the sea of sleep. The children helped us with words for the songs and the instrumental sections. I played my cello, my colleagues Roxana and Pete sang and, and played percussion. The Georgian trainees danced. And on a dismal gray afternoon, we performed to a small group of parents. The children scattered torn paper from a window to signify the beginning of our imaginative journey. And it was magical. When I returned to Scotland, I raised funds to work in the Royal Botanic Gardens with local primary school children. We were still working with communities which are in areas of multi-deprivation within our city. This time, the Scottish children sang in Georgian. Though the production was on a different scale, it had the same sense of liberation. To give you a sense of the musical language that we're working with, I'd like you to sing with me. Ah, that's a bit more friendly now. I feel better. <laughs> OK. I might put my clicker down, if that's all right. OK. So we're just going to start, because um, I, I need you to be a bit more friendly with me. Um, I'd like, after three, for you to turn to either the person on your left and go, boo. After three. One, two, three. Oh, with more energy. One, two, three. OK, you've got some minutes. And now I'd like to, you, to turn to the person on the other side, maybe give them a bit of a fright. And after three, you're going to go, ha. 
One, two, three. Very good. Now you're going to turn to the person behind you that you think is quite attractive, maybe, and you're going to say hello with your most expressive, friendly voice. Okay, feel free. <laughs> good. And now if you just like to have a little bit of focus now, we feel this sense of community within the room. Um, you're going to breathe in, and when you breathe out, you're going to sing on an R, a nice open sound, any note you want, any note you feel comfortable with. You're going to feel like a big choir. You're not going to be worried about being out of tune because you're just singing your own note, okay? So you're going to breathe in, one, two, three. Ah. Oh, that was wonderful. Yeah, we're quite tuneful. Um, we're now going to sing something. I'm not going to tell you what these words mean, but I think the music will carry an emotion beyond words. So I'm going to start over here. And when I set you up on your little bit of melody, you just keep going forever, okay? And then I'll move to the next group. Does that sound okay? So this, this sort of side over here to this nice gentleman, with all these rows, um, you're going to sing the word zili. Can we say that together? Zili. Other people might be saying that as well soon. But. And we're going to start off, and this is like the heartbeat of the music, so you need to keep it going, keep it very steady, and you only have to sing one note. Easy. Okay? So we go. Zili, 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 zili. Keep it going. Zili, 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 zili. Zili, 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 zili. Keep it going. Zili, 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 zili. Thank you, everyone. What a lovely choir. Beautiful. Oh. So since that time in Georgia, I've continued to create multi-art projects with children, artists, and my students here. In 2012, 250 primary school children took part in a project at the National Museum of Scotland called The City Sings. You can see this child with her lovely mouth wide open singing away. Um, we performed songs from around the world and a new composition that I had written. 
and we performed to a packed audience of 800 people in the Grand Gallery. In keeping with the ethos of music in the community, we were working with children from deprived areas of the city. But we were hoping to enable them to participate in this large community music project that we would bring about some change. I'd like to just um, read a quote from the head teacher who was involved in that project because I think it sums up what community music is about. Community music makes such a difference. It is the yeast in the dough. It lifts you above the nitty gritty and takes you out of yourself and makes you really believe in yourself. It is worth a thousand bottles of antidepressants and there is just not enough of it. It is a wonderful, wonderful thing and children learn so much from it. They learn to focus, they learn to listen, they learn lower order thinking skills like memory, but they also learn the highest order thinking skill of creativity. We've continued to make these projects in collaboration with the Royal Botanic Gardens for the past 12 years. But these collaborations have only been possible because of strong partnerships between organizations, my artistic collaborators, my students, the children. There has been boundless energy, goodwill, and team spirit. In 2006, we were the first organization to be able to make a performance in the glass houses of the Royal Botanic Garden. The project was devised for my students and act as, acted as a training project for them. And we gathered texts and images which resonated with the glass houses. We moved through seven connected spaces, each one with a different flora and scent and temperature. And this took us on a musical journey where a narrative unfolded. The multiplicity of cultures is reflected both in, from, in the material from which we drew our ideas, but also the songs. My students sang in Swedish, Georgian, Spanish, English. They played klezmer, contemporary classical music, and chamber music influenced by many folk traditions. The performance recognized the universal, universal, oh, I can't even say it, universality of music. I would like to play the final section, which took place in the magnificent um, temperate glass house. And it's a piece called, This is the Garden.
Let us open the door to the garden and make music together. And in that act of togetherness, to recognize, its, recognize music's infinite possibilities to change life for you, for the person far away in another part of the world, for the person next to you. That is community. Thank you very much.